Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna start with an update of Urs Kalatinsky, the Miracle Bear. So it's been a while since we saw any progress updates of this guy. He has been playing that Shadow game, and now he's finally out of the shadows. And uh, you can see how conditioned and how improved he actually is. So at this point, a couple of days out of the Arnold Classic, he posted a couple of photos. This one, for example. So let's take a look at it and let's see, did he make any significant changes? He didn't have a lot of time, I'll, I'll give him that, to progress, to actually grow. At a Mr. Olympia, he had a glaring weakness and it was basically an imbalance. His upper body was way smaller than his legs and his lower body. Still, it didn't stop him from beating all those guys at the Mr. Olympia except for Brion Ainsley, Terence Ruffin and Chris Bumstead. But now he's gonna be facing two out of those three guys that beat him. Can he beat Terence Ruffin and Brion Ainsley? If he made significant changes, he just might. So let's take a look at his physique right now. So in this front relaxed photo, you can see that his legs look sick, but he always had great legs. They probably didn't grow at all, maybe he worked on the details. His calves are looking sick, he has great calves. But let's talk about what actually matters, his upper body. Did he improve it? Did he gain more muscle? I think so, I think he did. I think he improved that imbalance. If we weren't aware that it was present last year, we probably wouldn't even notice that his upper body is behind his legs. But here, in this photo, for example, in this pose, it doesn't look like that at all. It looks like really super well balanced, it looks amazing. Here's the front double as well. I mean, his arms could grow a little bit more, but it's improved, it's much, much improved. By the way, look at the tiny waist, look at the weed taper, it just really flows really, really well. This is what Classic Physique is all about. Here you can see his arm, his right arm, a little bit more mass in that area would make his physique, of course, obviously better. He knows that, everybody knows that, here you can see it as well. I know how it is, my arms are horrible and my legs are dominant, so I, I know how he feels when everybody's telling you you need to improve your arms, he knows that, everybody knows it. It's just gonna take some time, I'm guessing next year it won't even be noticeable. Now, as far as the back, that was sort of also, I wouldn't even say a weakness, but a body part that is not as, as dominant as legs, for example. Even from behind, his lower body is just absolutely amazing. Glutes, hamstrings, uh, the, over, the overall size of the, arm, of the legs, um, like the, the inner part or the outer part and the calves, everything is just looking so good in the lower body, but the upper body... The back is still a little bit shallow, I mean, it's a good back, it's a fine back, but could it be more massive? It sure as hell could, for classic physique, it could, it could be better. This is, this is really, this is not comparable to like Chris Bumstead or Terence Ruffin, which I'm gonna show you in a moment because he posted updates as well. So in, the, in this pose, you can see his entire upper body is showing that, uh, that imbalance. That is improved, it was worse last year, but it's still there, especially the back, it could be fuller and thicker. What about his conditioning? I mean, we all saw those photos of his chiseled face and we thought he's gonna be like 0% body fat. Uh, did he justify those photos with his physique, with his body fat percent? Did he live up to the hype? I think so, yes, I think so. So if you guys don't compete or you have never done those crazy protocols, this is what bodybuilders do before the stage. So they first they uh, water load and the sodium and potassium load usually, and then as the week goes on, they taper it down, both water and sodium and potassium. So this is this is the usual protocol that most of them do. And I saw a story of course he was drinking nine liters of water. So when you start drinking so much and you and you consume a lot of uh, electrolytes, your body holds on to a little bit of water. So here he's not completely dried out. Once he pulls all the water and electrolytes and he carbs up his body, actually, I'm guessing he is very flat here, it's all gonna pop and his skin is gonna get so dry. And even if he uses a little bit of diuretic at the end, it's gonna look so much crazier. So I'm expecting Munzer conditioning here in a couple of days. You can see his glutes are completely peeled. There is no fat there. It's just skin and muscle. He just needs to get that final layer of subcutaneous water out and to carb up the muscle, it's gonna look insane. You can see the details in the lower lats. That's something you cannot see unless somebody is completely dialed in and it seems like Urs is. 
His conditioning will be great, but will he have as much muscle as Terence Ruffin? Not even close, no, no way. Look at this freaking back. This guy is basically a Kai Green or Ronnie Coleman of classic physique. George Peterson was, uh, may he rest in peace, was amazing in that, in that area as well, but it's, it looks like Ralph Diesel is surpassing him. Slowly, steadily, but surely. Look at that back. I mean, look at the the Christmas tree. This is this is this is one of the most prominent Christmas trees I ever saw, pretty much. And look at all the vascularity on his lats. Look at how much thick and dense muscle he has in that area. Like it is absolutely insane. And it is going to be a problem for Earth if he wants to win uh, that Iron Classic against Terence, who won it last time. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. This guy, this guy is really freaking muscular at this point, and he's bringing the conditioning as well and the details. And he's an incredible poser. So I'm guessing. Uh, look, this is my prediction. I think Terence is gonna win. And as far as the second, um, I'm not sure about Ramon or Urs and Ford. I believe will be Brion. I don't think Brion is gonna be second or first again. Urs did grow, but I think Terence made more progress. I think he grew more. And the rate that he's progressing at, it's really ridiculous. So he definitely is a favorite to win this Iron Classic with all this muscle, with probably perfect presentation and also great conditioning. I think he is the favorite. All right, next I wanted to talk a little bit more about Boston Lloyd, who passed away recently. May he rest in peace. So when I made my video about him passing, I mentioned something about this new crazy peptide, fat burning stuff that he was using uh, and that could have been the reason uh, of his kidney failure. So I found a video where he talked about it. So I'm going to show that to you guys and you can tell me what do you think. That peptide that I used, I started seeing some talk about it online. Like people were starting to mention it. It could be starting to become more popular. So I wanted to make sure I got this information out pretty quick because I knew that some idiots would do the same thing that I did. One month into that FTTP cycle, my shit, you know, goes all the way from two to six. Explain what FTB is to people. So FTTP and also it's called adipotide. It's it's really kind of a new thing on the market. No to, really, yeah, good. Okay. There's no human studies done on it. It's been researched on monkey and mice. Um, but basically it's a peptide that not just shrinks fat cells, but kills fat cells. And I'm guessing, it, and I was shooting it around my kidney fat area, like low back area where my kidneys are. Mm -hmm. I was shooting it in my chest, my, and I was using a bottle a day, which was five milligrams, because there's no dosing protocols on this that, stuff. That, it, so, it sounds like a lot, five it milligrams. Was, it was a lot, because I talked to some people that used it, and they were doing like one-fifth of that. Yeah. So where a bottle would last a normal person five days, I was doing a bottle a day for, for and I was, you know, I was wondering because I had all this dead, uh, dead blood in my sperm. Oh, really? Like brown. Yeah, I was coming brown. I was like, something's wrong. And that's when I was in kidney failure, but I didn't know. Dave, right. there was one day where I threw up like 30 times. I was just on the side of the bed. Right. Every, every like 10, 20 minutes, I was throwing up. What are the side effects? Do they actually have listed side effects online? Yeah, so the listed side effects are the only side effects that weren't studied on humans. It was studying on mice and monkey. And majority of the mice and monkey got acute kidney fa failure and acute kidney injury. Crazy stuff, right? So he was using something that has never been tested on humans. It was tested on mice and monkey. And the side effect of it was actually kidney failure. That happened to mice and monkey. He was using five milliliters every day. So one whole bottle a day. But even though there was no prescribed dosage, he was talking to other people who were using this stuff and they were using only a fifth of what he was using. 5 milliliters of whatever sounds a lot, especially if you don't know what it is. It's a whole bottle per day. He was injecting it everywhere and in his kidney area. And apparently that's what messed him up. I mean, it could have been uh, like a lifelong exposure to high blood pressure. Uh, he was using everything under the sun. But it looks like this was that final drop that caused him to pass away. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Tell me what do you think about Boston's death, and also tell me what do you think about uh, Urs Kalicinski and his uh, most recent physique update. Is this gonna be good enough for him to win the Arnold Classic, play second, third, 
Whatever your thoughts are, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.